Harry, there's great interest in your thoughts on many issues, on investments in the North East, on the Continental Free Trade Agreement. Um, feel free to take your pick, but would you like to take the microphone and, and leave us with, with, with a final thought from you? We have uh, a very young population. Our population is estimated conservatively to be uh, 180 million. Uh, this is a conservative one. More than 60% of the population is below the age of, six, uh, of 30. Uh, a lot of them haven't been to school, and uh, they are claiming, uh, uh, you know, that Nigeria has been an oil-producing country, therefore uh, they should sit and do nothing and uh, get housing, health care, uh, education free. The final thought that opened up Pandora's box of reactions, mostly against President Muhammadu Buhari's comments. It is very unfair for the president to go out of the country and begin to say that the youth of this nation are lazy. The same youth that he was proud to use when he wanted power, when he was so desperate to be the president of this nation. He, he, he used the youth. He knew then they were not lazy. Even during his inaugural uh, speech, he did thank the youth. And of course, what the social media did to ensure that he came into power. If these children don't work in their productive age, when they get old, they will die. But the president's spokesman rose to his defense to clarify his intended meaning. If you look at Mr. President's uh, words, his uh, statement, in no place did he say Nigerian youth were lazy. That word lazy did not feature at all. It's an attempt at the marketing, but that attempt will not succeed because Mr. President has a solid profile. Although the word lazy was not mentioned, the inference is what has become the bone of contention. But dissecting the comments of the president, certain pointers can be traced to the issues on ground in Nigeria. In the northeast, there's a vast amount of children roaming the streets. No thanks to the Amajiri system that has set them apart from their families for guidance. Who is to be held responsible for how they turn out in future? especially if they fall into the wrong hands. The president also touched on the South-South, where the oil that feeds the nation comes from. Here, majority of the youth are without livelihood, largely because the environment has experienced a large amount of degradation, which has left them without work. Oil has been Nigeria's main selling point for decades, and this has had a negative impact on other sectors which receive little support for development. So this graph from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics showing a spike in the youth unemployment rate from 2015 to 2017 is not surprising. Education might not necessarily be gotten through universities. So perhaps the government, in trying to engage the youth positively, might need to look into setting up more technical colleges where skills can be acquired so that any unengaged youth can have no one but themselves to blame if they fail to turn the opportunity provided into endless possibilities. Oralu Ashonibare, Channels Television News. Welcome back. Now to weigh in on this subject matter, I've got uh, Toyosi Akerele, who is the founder of Rise Network, and I also have Nelson Kujumi, who is the chairman committee for the protection of people's mandates. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, chairman. Good to see you. Well, let me start with you. Um, you've released, you've made a comment, I think, on a statement about this matter uh, previously. You thought you, your view was that this was being twisted. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Could you share some light to what you've meant by that? Okay, what I meant by that is that, one, the president made mention of a lot of the, of the, of a young population of about 60 percent that they have not assessed education and that some, they sit down and do nothing expecting freebies in terms of health and what have you. But you and I know very well, even without Mr. President coming out to say it, from your, from the video we just watched, we have uh, about the highest population of out-of-school kids. Our unemployment ratio now is about 33% thereabouts. 
the illiteracy level in Nigeria is about 63 million as we speak conservative, conservatively. And, you know, that is a fact. And I make mention of the fact that I'm, I was taught that, or I read in the Bible, that truth exalts a nation. Some people have quarreled that, oh, why did he say that this poor? No, no, before you get onto that stage, I'm just trying to understand the correlation uh, for out of school kids, kids. Yeah. 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 That's separate. Yeah. But when uh, people say that, well, he, when he says, uh, Youth, young people, about 60%, they expect freebies, they sit at home and do nothing. Now, when people infer or by knowing they say, look, he is saying that youths are lazy, is that right or wrong? No, it's very wrong. Because there's a difference between when you sit down and do nothing or when you have Expecting something. Expecting freebies. Yes, or when you have something to do. It's, it's a reflection of the mentality that pervades our society today. Okay, so whereby, if... whereby our youths believe you can attain success, you can attain prosperity without work, without diligence. It's a, it's a societal malice that we must you know, be bold enough to confront. That because of the fact that leadership has failed, the family has failed, the, the, every facet of our lives we have almost failed. What would you we don't, we, the youths don't have mentors again. Okay. I remember when okay. I was growing up. Uh, I we'll, we'll come to okay. one, 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 